Mr. Murphy, let me tell you something serious. I'm going to be torn apart and devoured by tigers. What does that have to do with anything, Simon? You're just talking about insurance. I was. Now I'm talking about tigers. The interesting thing about being attacked by multiple tigers is that they usually hunt alone. Not in packs like lions, which makes my demise very unique. Did you just get your machine of death prediction recently? Actually, it's been about seven weeks now. But I'm sorry, you're right. We should probably get back to talking about insurance. Um, Mr. Murphy, are you aware in the event of your sudden accidental death, your family might incur miscellaneous costs of upwards Wait of- Wait a second. My card says that I will die of colon cancer. Not as exciting as you and your tigers. Now, that gives me plenty of time to get my affairs in order. Many of our customers come to us with this same story, Mr. Murphy. The fact of the matter is that although the machine of death is accurate in the cause of one's demise, it might be misleading as far as the actual events. This is coming from a guy who claims he'll be mauled by tigers. Listen. I'm a doctor. I'm already screening myself regularly. It's not like I'll be hit by some runaway colon cancer truck. Now, I just need life insurance because my employer doesn't provide it. Can you help me out or not? What do you know about the latest healthcare legislation being debated in Congress? Uh, that it's likely to be ratified within a week. Why? Okay. It contains a clause which will mandate all people applying for health and life insurance to submit to a death prediction. An attached bill allows insurers to deny that coverage if the result is considered a non-preventable illness, such as uh, heart disease or cancer. You're kidding, right? Uh, it's all true. The good news, however, is that we have a new plan specifically for sufferers of non-preventable illnesses. Now it is non-exclusive, guarantees a low premium, and can provide multi-million dollar coverage for qualified patients. I can sign you up for a preliminary evaluation uh, to confirm your qualification now, and then your coverage can be implemented in as little as one week. Okay, now you're talking. Tell me more. Hey Simon, going to Mickey D's in a couple minutes. I'm gonna get you something. Oh, no thanks. Uh, today I'm having rosemary chicken with vegetables. Hmm, sounds healthy. No, exactly, Brad. Uh, from here on out, I intend to make myself exceptionally, even exquisitely healthy. Uh, tigers deserve a good meal, so, well, I figure I ought to provide one. Dude, stop it with the tigers. It can't be healthy for you to think about it all the time. But look, I'm gonna die of battery failure. That's so vague, I don't even know what it's supposed to mean but you don't see me freaking out about it. I want to think about the tigers all the time. I'm looking forward to it. Like, you wouldn't believe. Why? Because it'll be the most exciting thing that ever happens to me. Who else knows they're going to die like this? Even if it doesn't happen the way I dreamed it, it's still one hell of a way to go. I always have something to look forward to. <clears throat> Simon, a moment please, in my office. After lunch is fine. We need to discuss your recent work performance. Okay, Mr. Anderson. You wanted to 
speak with me, sir. Uh, have a seat, Simon. Okay. I wanted to start by telling you that I am quite pleased with your newfound uh, gumption and enthusiasm. You show a level of dedication that is, well, let's say uncommon around these halls. Thank you, sir. That being said, this tiger nonsense has to stop, especially with the customers. I don't know if I am imparting the proper gravity to the situation here, Simon. You may think that your work is menial, but you don't want to be unemployed in this economic climate. <laughs> Trust me. The thing is, Mr. Anderson, it's really hard for me to be concerned about being unemployed. I mean, I'm going to be mauled sooner or later, but it's not like the tigers hunt around here, and I'm not crazy enough to jump into their zoo exhibit. That's not exactly what your cubicle decorations say. Look, I know I can go a little bit overboard with the pictures and stuff, but it's all in good fun. Like I said to Brad, how many people know that they're going to die this way? I mean, who even has a prediction this specific? Uh, the only one I've ever heard of was that politician whose card said something like uh, exhaustion from having sex with a minor. My point exactly. We see stats on causes of death every day. How many cancers? How many heart attacks? How many drunk drivers? I'm one in a million because out of all the typical ways to die, for all the mysterious and misleading predictions from the infallible machine of death, this one rare, specific, and unconventional demise is my destiny. I might as well celebrate it. You're a weird guy, Simon. If you were any less of a salesman, I would be handing you your pink slip and personally ushering you right out that door. But for every tiger mutilation story that I've got on tape, there's another of you winning over a stubborn customer. But attitude alone, my advice is to remember that you are being monitored. Advice duly noted and will be taken into consideration. <laughs> right. Now, get back out there and sell some policies. And please, no tigers. I wish I was looking forward to my heart attack like that. <laughs>